Eternity does not have Opera Mobile, but uh, instead, go to MediaNet, and we can enter a URL, and same accelerometer and a keyboard built in. The keyboard's a little bit different on the Eternity and uh, the Behold than it is on the Omnias, but still works pretty well. You kind of have to get used to how, I don't know if you noticed, we'll go back a little bit, how the keys kind of jump out to the side, and so it can be a little confusing at first. You can see when you tap, they jump out to the side instead of on top. So sometimes when you're first using it, you know, at least I sometimes thought, oh, I was pressing the letter next to it, like pressing H instead of G or whatever. But you get used to it, it works pretty well, and then you can also uh, use the T9 style keyboard. Um, and so here is the Eternities browser, which also is, is pretty good. Uh, not quite as robust as Opera Mobile, but definitely um, for a feature phone, pretty nice, full HTML. You can see AT&T not quite as fast, at least where I am as uh, Verizon's 3G network. You know, if you want out of these phones while, while this is just going, I think if you're in the U.S. and you want the full-on uh, best performance and you don't care if it's unlocked or locked or whatever, the Verizon Omni is really nice. I think it's the best combination of, you know, all the features, the hardware features, the uh, flexibility of the smartphone. Uh, operating system, and then also Verizon's network. You're going to pay because Verizon's data plan is expensive, and uh, you know the phone isn't isn't super cheap either. But it works really well. Uh, the Eternity also works quite well, and maybe where you are, AT&T's 3G service is a little bit faster than it is for me here in the Bay Area. But uh, you can see the browser actually works quite well. Um, full HTML renders the page pretty faithfully. Um, it doesn't have quite the same features as Opera Mobile, but you can zoom in and out with the rocker switch, which you can also do on the Opera Mobile versions. And, uh, you know, the page looks good. It, it's, it's, again, full HTML and a little bit slower to render than Opera, but not too bad. And you can zoom around, pan around rather with the touch screen. No optical mouse, so you're going to have to get to the links yourself. But, um, I mean, you know, yourself with your, with your thumb does not come or with your finger. It does not come with a stylus either. Um, you know, I do like the inclusion of some sort of a D-pad or optical mouse on these touchscreen phones. Makes it just a little easier to get around. Not everybody, you know, touchscreens are nice, but uh, I like the combination. I like having something else down here, whether it's a trackball or an optical mouse or a D-pad or what have you. But anyway, um, these are all capacitive touchscreen or resistive touchscreens rather, not capacitive, um, but they work pretty well. Definitely, I think, more responsive, as I say that, of course, I can't click on the link, uh, more responsive than the older Samsung touchscreen phones, uh, even than the Instinct. I find this generation to be a little better than the Instinct. But uh, here we'll go to Phone Finder, and a little haptic feedback, let me know that the link clicked, and you can see the uh, icon is moving to let me know that we're browsing around. Um, in the meantime, I'll also show you the uh, T-Mobile Behold, and this is interesting because when I first got this phone, I was really disappointed with the web browser. Um, and then thanks to some posts that I saw on Howard forums and Timo News forums, and then somebody actually posted it to the Phone Dog forums, there's actually a pretty easy hack that will let you get around the browser issues. And basically what was going on is that um, uh, T-Mobile has this new service called Web2Go. And their servers are actually, uh, it looks like it's Yahoo technology. They're actually kind of uh, pre-parsing these sites into mobile versions. So I went to PhoneDog, and PhoneDog does not actually have a WAP version right now. But it was showing up as kind of a pseudo WAP version on the Behold. And I was kind of bummed out about this because T-Mobile had been talking about how this phone was going to have full HTML browsing. Well, there's a hack you can do, which basically just involves changing the server settings. And um, once I enabled this hack, I was able to get to the actual full-on web browser. And so the, the Behold actually has a full HTML browser on it. It's just that... Uh, it's just that it was not enabled uh, because of the server. So I'll show you. Go to phonedog.com. And we'll hit go. I hit the wrong button before. I don't know why erotic is showing up under the T-Zones menu. That's, that's why I paused there. That was kind of strange. You see that? I don't know what's going on there. Why erotic is in the T-Zones menu. Weird. And so again, you know, not quite as fast as the uh, Omnia was. And the screen's a little bit smaller than the Omnia or... Uh, 
or the eternity. So here's the eternity and you can see the phone dog phone finder uh, loaded up just fine and pretty easy to scroll, scroll around. And so here's full HTML now on the Behold, which is great. And once the page gets done loading and rendering, So uh, this definitely improved my opinion of the Behold. I still, you know, the camera performance is a little bit disappointing considering it's a full-on 5 megapixel camera phone. And I've had some reception problems with this phone uh, using it in places where other T-Mobile phones seem to work fine. I was getting kind of an annoying kind of buzzing sound in the background on several calls in a row. I've heard from readers of the phone dog site that they've gotten the Behold and it works just fine for them. So there you go. But I'll post details about the hack to get the full HTML uh, experience on the Behold. Uh, we'll post that on the Phone Dog blog, or you can just go to the Phone Dog forums and find it. There's a one of our great readers posted the trick, and um, I actually there are a couple different server settings that I tried before I found one that worked with my account. Um, but this is with the 599 T Zones account, full HTML, no problems. So that's pretty nice. Uh, here we'll go to another website so you can see. We'll do, uh, I wonder if New York Times will recognize me as a mobile browser or not, let's see. And then it's got the accelerometer, so it'll rotate back for you. Yeah, so it's the mobile version. I think the touch screens on these, you know, I think, the uh, Omnia and the Eternity, the touchscreens, are maybe just a tad more responsive than the Behold, but again, they're all pretty good. Um, and uh, they definitely, ah, the Yankees signed another pitcher. Uh, they're definitely, like I said, a little bit better than the previous generation of, of Samsungs, but not quite as good as the newer capacitive touchscreens that you see on the iPhone 3G, the T-Mobile G1, and even the BlackBerry Storm, minus the clicking part, the actual touchscreen, you know, is quite responsive. Um, as we mentioned, talking about the cameras, uh, you know, I don't, except for the deal with the flash, I mean, with these cameras, you know, the performance is very similar. So the Omni in the back, 5 megapixel, the Eternity, 3 megapixel, the uh, Behold, 5 megapixel also. The actual performance is pretty similar. The uh, Omnia and the Behold have autofocus, and they also have a flash. The flash doesn't do a ton for you. I mean, it does help, but it doesn't do a ton. So, you know, I don't know that any of these is really going to replace your standalone camera. And for taking pictures that are going to be shared via the web or via text messaging, MMS messaging or email or online, you don't really, difference between 3 and 5 megapixels isn't really going to make that much of a difference. You're really talking about print size because the image quality isn't great enough on any of these that you're going to be able to do a lot of like really high quality zooming in and cropping and all that. So if you know, you're interested in the Eternity, but you're a little put off because the camera doesn't have as many megapixels as the other two, I don't really think it's a big deal. Unless you're looking at a camera phone you can use to take a lot of pictures that you're going to print, in which case you know, there are better camera phones on the market. That being said, these are all you know, better than average, certainly, in terms of specs. And the quality isn't bad. It's just not as great as I was hoping it was going to be when you see a phone, you know, like the Behold Advertise is like this super amazing camera. Eh, not quite. Not bad, but not quite that great.